So anything to discuss? Oh, yeah. Okay, this intermediate body yeah, is not for all rebirths. Lah. This intermediate body yeah, is only for the case of a being uh, that is going to take rebirth in a womb. That means a being uh, that is going to be reborn as a human being or as an animal uh, that has to go into the womb. So for it to go into the womb, uh, the egg uh, must be fertilized. Uh. The egg must be fertilized. Then only uh, the consciousness uh, can descend into that fertilized egg. Uh. So for that egg to fertilize, uh, there are three conditions. Uh. No, for that birth to take place, uh, there are three conditions. First, the mother and father must come together. And then uh, the mother must be in the right season. That means the egg must be there. Uh. Uh, and then... This being uh, is waiting to enter the womb, is there. Uh, so these three conditions. Now, how long it takes for him to wait uh, to enter that uh, womb uh, is not mentioned in our Theravada original suttas. Uh. The Buddha only said uh, that uh, has to wait for the mother and father to come together. Uh, then only when the egg is fertilized, then he can enter. Uh. Uh, so... Only for these two, lah. and we know uh, in our early suttas, uh, there are five destinations of rebirth. Heavenly beings, uh, human beings, um, ghosts, animal and hell beings. Lah. Out of these five, uh, only this uh, human and uh, animal rebirth, uh, that being has to wait. Lah. For the other three, uh, it's immediate rebirth. Lah in heaven as a ghost and in hell. Uh, in fact, hell is stated very clearly uh, that uh, when a being uh, dies uh, and his karma is going to bring him to hell, uh, the hell beings will come up and put, drag him down to hell. Uh, what we say, Ngao Tao Ma Min, Gu Tao Be Bin, does exist, uh, hell beings. Okay. It depends on uh, his samadhi, like how deep is his samadhi. In the suttas, it is mentioned uh, that uh, one day a layman uh, uh, was praising an external sect ascetic. Uh, I'm not sure which one. He said uh, this external sect ascetic, uh, he was in deep samadhi. Uh, and then uh, the king brought 500 soldiers uh, pass by the road, uh, making a lot of noise, uh, you know, these horses going uh, the uh, horse carriage and everything. Uh, and this uh, ascetic uh, was sitting under the tree. Uh, and the king and 500 soldiers passed by. Uh, he didn't even know. Uh, he was in, in Samadhi. Uh, he didn't even know. So he praised this ascetic to the Buddha. And the Buddha asked him, Is this better? Uh, or uh, the Buddha said, uh, At one time, uh, the Buddha was meditating in a hut uh, in the forest. And then a storm arose. Uh, a big storm arose and a lot of trees were fell, a lot of trees fell down uh, and uh, lightning struck and all these things, uh, strong winds uh, and so many trees fell down uh, that a number of uh, cows were killed, uh, cows and buffaloes were killed uh, and then after the big storm, uh, a lot of villagers came out uh, and tried to clear the road and clear the damage done and, and all that uh. so the Buddha happened to come out of the hut uh, and ask them what happened? Why so many people around here? And uh, they said that there was a big storm. Where were you? They asked the Buddha. The Buddha said, I was in the hut. And they said, how come you were in the hut? You didn't know there was a big storm. The Buddha said, I was meditating. Uh, so the Buddha asked the man, uh, which is better, like, 
uh, not to hear the big storm or to not to hear the uh, 500 soldiers go by. Na. So your samadhi, uh, depending on how deep it is, uh, that is different. Uh. So probably if you are in the first jhana, somebody comes and uh, uh, gives you a slap, uh, maybe you may get out of your first jhana. Uh. But if you are in the fourth jhana, uh, probably uh, give you a slap, uh, you may not come out of the fourth jhana. But in the the highest state, uh, the cessation of perception and feeling, uh, if you enter that state uh, and they come and see you, uh, you see your breath has stopped, your heartbeat has stopped, uh, and they think you are dead. Uh, there's a case uh, in the suttas about the previous Buddha, one of the previous Buddha, uh, the disciple, uh, I think his name was Sanjiva, Sanjiva, I think meaning come back to life. Uh. He was meditating in the deep forest alone uh, and he had entered this cessation of perception and feeling uh, where all his consciousness stopped. Uh. And then these villagers, they went to the forest to look for wood and look for this and look for that and they saw him. And then when they found that his breath had stopped, his heart had stopped, uh, they assumed that he was dead. Uh. So they thought uh, we could give him a proper send-off. Uh. So they found a lot of... Uh, dry wood, uh, pile all the wood on top of him uh, and burn the thing. And they thought, uh, give him a proper cremation. Uh. And next morning, he went on arms round uh, in the village. Uh, they got a shock. Uh. They thought his ghost came. <laughs> then they found that uh, he survived the big flame. Uh. So you see, uh, when he enters the cessation of perception and feeling, uh, even a big fire also cannot harm him. So probably he didn't even harm his ropes or so. Uh. Because otherwise he would have gone naked into the town. <laughs> so, but it, there is the possibility that, uh, like for example, the day was the uh, home, meant for very long hours, and some of the people the door and feel that they have been meditating for so long, and uh, when you feel the breath and go away, so they call an ambulance. So, when an ambulance came, that depends on this one, uh, his uh, samadhi and also you know, before I came to Buddhism, uh, I was uh, practicing uh, Hinduism uh, for about four years. Uh. So I read about one of the Indian saints. Uh. When he was young, uh, maybe because of his previous life, uh, being able to enter Samadhi, uh, sometimes when he sleeps, uh, he goes into a very deep sleep. Uh. So his friends come and disturb him. Uh, he's not aware, you know. They tease him and slap him and all that, uh, so he's not aware. So, that has to do with the previous life. Mm. If he's in a deep samadhi, I will not affect him. He's not aware of his body. I would think so. But generally, it's hard to find a lay person who can attain that type of samadhi. If he can attain that type of samadhi, he won't stay as a lay person. According to the Buddha's words, definitely he won't stay as a lay person. Now uh, we don't talk about uh, specific uh, cases, la, I, I don't know. Mm. So you went to that three stage 
You see, somebody like Chitta, even though he's not considered a renunciant, but I would, uh, I believe uh, that the life he leads uh, is very similar to a renunciant. So, because he has already seen the Dhamma and being an Anagamin, uh, he's not interested in worldly affairs, probably his business and all that, uh, he leaves to the wife uh, to run leaves to the wife to run the home and all that. And then he just considers his room to be like a cave. And he hide himself in the room the whole day or most of the time. Except maybe when it's time to do dana to the monks, he'll come out and do dana. So a person who uh, can attain even the first sotapanna, he would already have some revulsion. This word revulsion, you can say disenchantment, you can say we're in, we're in of the world. No more chasing after uh, anything uh, interesting in the world. No more interested to go and see Guatum <laughs> Purong. Oh, this one I can't tell you. La. I can't tell you. You see, like, uh, I mean, you can think of various possibilities. La. So, I suppose, like, uh, you take a, take a plane, you go overseas uh, on a holiday or something, and then your plane crashes, uh, and then you die there. La. But, say you die in America, but the people you have, have affinity with uh, is in Malaysia. Whether your what you call soul or whatever there, can come back to Malaysia. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Mm. But this, you know, there are some people, huh, like this uh, Professor Ian Stevenson, has written a book, huh, done a lot of research about the incarnation. Uh, has written a small booklet and the other person, I think it's Francis Story or something like that. Francis Story or Agaton Baptist uh, written about rebirth. Uh. And when they hear uh, that a person remembers their past life, uh, they go and question him. Uh. So it seems there was one case of a person uh, he remembered uh, that when he died, uh, he took a uh, form uh, of a small being, a uh, few inches on it. Uh, and uh, he didn't know where to go. And then he saw his funeral, everything. You know. and after that, he was wandering around. He didn't know where to go uh, for a few days. Uh. Then one day, he saw somebody uh, whom he recognized uh, to come from the sister's house. Uh. That person uh, maybe went to market or something. And is going home uh, with the basket. Uh. And then this being, uh, he jumped into that basket and seemed he was reborn as the sister's son. So, I mean, that's what he remembers, la. so it's interesting. Mm. Okay. So, for the 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 consider it, can consider it uh, to be a uh, kind of being. Uh, 
because the Buddha says uh, that when you have a being uh, with consciousness, uh, it must come together with the five aggregates. You cannot have consciousness uh, without the five aggregates. So you, it's actually a, a being. Uh, but because it's a temporary being, uh, the Buddha does not classify it uh, as one of the five destinations of rebirth uh, because it's only temporary, uh, maybe if only for a few days or for a few weeks. Uh, and then it will enter the womb. Uh. So it has consciousness. Uh. So when it enters the fertilized egg, uh, you know what in the sutta they call it the descent of consciousness. Uh. Descent of consciousness uh, into, into that uh, egg. Uh. So once it descends into that egg, uh, then it will have the six senses. Uh. Uh, then it's aware. Uh, it's an egg in the womb. Uh. Uh, it's aware of the surroundings. Uh. So when that egg, uh, that fertilized egg, uh, when the consciousness enters, uh, that is it become a being already. Uh. Uh, so if you, after that, uh, if you perform an abortion, uh, uh, that's a killing of a human being. Are you talking about monks, monks, monks and nuns? I think that uh, rotten monks and nuns, uh, they are present uh, in all traditions uh, and in all religions. Uh, so that cannot be helped, uh, the rotten eggs. Uh, but uh, the motive uh, of a person wearing the robe is very important. Uh, there are some people, they wear the robe uh, as a means of livelihood uh, so that they have an easy life, they don't have to work. Uh, uh, people just bring food to them. They don't have to slog so hard. Uh, and sometimes they get very good offerings. Uh, so, although like in the different uh, sects of Buddhism, uh, this is found, uh, but there are certain sects uh, where it's more pronounced. Uh, for example, like in Chinese Buddhism. In Chinese Buddhism, because uh, the peculiarity about Chinese Buddhism uh, is that the monks and the nuns uh, have been forced by the Emperor of China in the year 511 uh, to become vegetarians. So after they became vegetarians, uh, they found that they have to cook themselves, they have to look for money to buy food because they are not able to go on arms round. Uh, once they become vegetarians, uh, it's not practical to go on arms round. Uh, nobody's going to provide you with vegetarian food. Uh. So uh, then as a result of taking vegetarian food, uh, they found that at night uh, they get hungry uh, because uh, vegetarian food uh, digests very easily uh, and uh, even you take breakfast and lunch uh, by night uh, you get hungry already uh, unlike taking of meat uh, uh. so uh, it is generally true uh, that most Mahayana monks and nuns uh, probably 90% of them uh, or more they eat at night uh, uh, and sometimes they eat openly or so. Uh, they even go for dinner uh, with lay people uh, and uh, eat from the same dishes and all that, uh, which is uh, not allowed by the Vinaya. Uh. So because of relaxing the rules, uh, they find that, uh, you know, that's the danger with relaxing the rules. Uh. Once you start relaxing one rule, then you relax another and relax another, and very soon, uh, you are not able to keep any rule uh, because people take for granted uh, that you uh, is, is not important. Uh. So that's why they start about talking about fang pian fa men, uh, expedient means, provisional means. Uh. Uh, the problem is fang pian fa men becomes sui pian fa men. Uh. 
uh, uh, anything boleh, anything can do. Uh, so uh, that's the problem. Uh. And this uh, vegetarian practice uh, is not a Mahayana practice. It is a Han Chuan Fo Chiao. It's peculiar only to Chinese Buddhism because you have other branches of Mahayana Buddhism uh, like Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, they don't practice uh, vegetarianism. Uh, so it's only peculiar to China and those places like uh, Vietnam uh, because they are influenced by China. Uh, then also uh, or South Korea. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, But hard to say la, because that was long after the Buddha passed away, yeah, whether they actually kept the Vinaya or not, la. you don't know. La. But like in Tibetan Buddhism, la, a lot of external sect practices la, have crept into Tibetan Buddhism because Tibetan Buddhism started only 1,200 years after the Buddha passed away. La. So things like uh, Tantric Buddhism, la, which comes from Tantra Yoga, where the master and the disciple can make love and all these things. Uh, it's taught in their teachings, uh, but it's totally uh, against the Buddha's uh, Vinaya. Uh, so it's uh, one of the things uh, that caused the downfall of Buddhism in India. Uh, so the Buddha always stressed uh, that uh, we have to uphold the Vinaya and practice the Dhamma. Uh, that's why the Dhamma Vinaya is our teacher. Uh, so you cannot say you want to practice part of the Buddha's teachings, you don't want to practice another part. Uh, so that, uh, that will cause the disappearance of the true Dhamma. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all these uh, wrong practices and wrong teachings are not peculiar to one sect. Uh, they are found in all forms of Buddhism, uh, even Theravada Buddhism. Uh, Theravada Buddhism now is also very much corrupted. Uh, by uh, later books uh, like the commentaries and Abhidharma and all that. Uh, so that nowadays uh, people talk, don't talk about attaining the jhanas. Uh, but uh, in the Buddha's time, uh, the jhanas uh, are extremely important. Yeah. So in one of the biographies, he was about to see what the success of the country underlies. Because there's no need to achieve a culture of your own food. So what you have to do is to go to the field and pick up the things that are never were like a city of Echo and all this kind of stuff for the field. They said, if you bring them from the Sunday's farm, they said the mom is still living. It can amount to stealing uh, if they did not give her permission and they are not happy uh, that she took the, those things. Uh. But you see, that's the danger of some people. Uh. Instead of following the Buddha's instructions uh, and depending on the Buddha's wisdom uh, to guide us, uh, some people, uh, they want to use their own wisdom. Uh. They think uh, they are very smart, but they are not smart. The Buddha wanted uh, monks and nuns uh, to rely on lay people for their food uh, so that the lay people would have a means of getting uh, blessings, uh, merit. Uh. Uh, that's why in the monks' Vinaya, uh, it's not allowed for a monk uh, to go deep into the forest uh, and live like, uh, for example, a Hindu ascetic uh, and live off the roots of the trees or live off the, the fruits. Uh, and all that, uh, and survive in the deep jungle. The Buddha did not allow that. The Buddha said, uh, a monk must come out and beg for his food. After getting your food, uh, if you want, you can go into the deep forest uh, to meditate. But every day you have to come out and beg for your food. Uh, that's because 
the Buddha wants the uh, lay people uh, and the monks uh, and nuns uh, to interact uh, so that they benefit each other. Uh. Uh, if she has studied the Buddha's words uh, in the earliest Nikayas and in the Vinaya, she would not come to that conclusion uh, because she didn't study. Uh, so probably uh, she thought she was doing the right thing. Uh. In fact, we find in the suttas uh, sometimes uh, external sect ascetics, uh, they are very proud of their teaching, they are very proud of their sect, of their religion and all that. They come and argue with the Buddha. And then they argue, argue with the Buddha, and finally the Buddha defeat them uh, and convince them uh, of the Buddha's teachings. Uh. Then they realize, you know what, is, what they realize? They realize, uh, they thought uh, that they were monks before, uh, they said now they realize they were not monks before. They thought they were practicing the holy life, but now they realize they were not practicing the holy life. <laughs> so you see, eh? sometimes eh, you use your own wisdom, eh? you think you are doing the right thing, eh? you are doing the wrong thing. Uh, that's why it's very important eh, to rely on the wisdom of a Samasambuddha. Uh, that's why sometimes eh, people come and learn from a teacher, they are not willing to give up their own preconceived ideas. Eh? They think uh, they are smarter than the teacher. Eh? Uh, that's the problem. Uh, when you learn from the teacher, you have to give up some of your views. Uh, like the Buddha says in the Sutta, the Buddha told one of his disciples, when you come to learn, uh, you must have always have the view uh, that the teacher knows more than me. Uh, otherwise, no, no point to follow your teacher. Ma. You go, and go, go on your own. Uh, you, you think <laughs> a person I think, is smart enough. Uh, no need to follow a teacher. You go on your own. Uh, so in the same way, when we are disciples of the Buddha, uh, when the person renounces, uh, he's called the son of the Sakyan, Sakya Buddha. Uh, so we must always follow the Buddha's instructions, uh, not like this nun. Uh, in fact, in the later, several hundred years after the Buddha passed away, uh, people uh, who use their own thinking, uh, they start creating new teachings, uh, and they call it expedient teachings, fang pian fa men and all that, uh, which is basically what Mayana Sutras are about. Uh, uh, they create things like Panin Pusa. Uh, and why do they create things like Panin Pusa and Omitoko? Because they think uh, it's difficult for ordinary people to practice a spiritual path, very difficult to meditate, difficult to keep the precepts and all these things. Uh. So uh, you have this fang pian fa men, uh, where you can pray to Kuan Yin for help. That and they think that is bringing people into Buddhism so that slowly uh, they can follow the Buddha. But that's a silly way of thinking because once they come into Buddhism uh, with this uh, Kuan Yin and Amitabha Buddha in their mind, uh, they will cling to it, they will never give up. They are not going to change from Kuan Yin uh, to become a great meditator, no, they will cling on to Kuan Yin. Uh, so the Buddha, uh, from the very beginning, uh, the Buddha never compromised on such things. Uh. Uh, the Buddha always uh, taught uh, the essence of the holy life. Uh. Given it's difficult to do also, uh, the Buddha said that uh, we should follow because that is necessary. You see? Uh, so if we want an uh, easy way, I uh, always say uh, cheap things are not good, good things are not cheap. Uh, Okay. Yeah. He is going back tomorrow, must ask this question. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Can. Can. Because uh, in the suttas, uh, the Buddha says uh, there are nine types of beings in the world, only nine types of beings. Uh, uh, the first one is the putujana. Putujana means an ordinary whirling. Uh, and then after that are uh, eight aryans. The eight aryans are the first path, the first fruit, second path, second fruit, third path, third fruit, fourth path, fourth fruit. Uh, uh. So if you have not attained any aryan stage, uh, that person will be a putujana. 
doesn't matter whether he's a monk or a nun or a lay person. Uh, if he has not become an Arya, he is a Putujana. So that will include all the beings in hell, all the beings in the ghost realm, all the beings in the animal realm, and most of the human beings, uh, and most of the devas and devis. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah. Most of them are Putujana. That's why uh, when they uh, come across an Arya or Arahana, they have great respect. Okay, stop here for tonight, huh?